Hi, and welcome to the section of the Differential Equations Tutor. In this section, we're going to do a series of problems over the next several sections on applications of first order linear differential equations. Uh, we've talked a lot of theory, solved a lot of problems, how to actually apply the techniques to solve these first order systems, but what we haven't done is talk in huge detail about the applications of what you can do with this stuff. The truth is differential equations are all around us, especially when you get to engineering and physics and chemistry. And, and the truth is, is that nature really does work on rates of change. A lot of times something is proportional to how fast something else is changing or the rate of change of something else, and that's going to lead to a differential equation. And of course there's lots of differential equations that are second order and higher, but there's plenty of cases, really interesting cases, of practical things in everyday life uh, that are completely governed by first order equations that we know how to solve, either by separation of variables or by some other method. So let's dive into that. In this section we're going to talk about mixing problems. Here you're going to have rates of liquids coming together. Maybe things are dissolved in the liquids things like that. My best advice is for you to read the problem enough times so that you really understand what uh, they're giving you and how everything plays together. And uh, there is sort of a general path that you'll follow, but not all problems are going to be the same. You're just going to have to get some practice with it. So let's dive right into that. First problem is water flows into one end of a pool at 10 cubic meters per minute and out the other end of the pool at the same rate. The pool's volume is 1,000 cubic meters. Initially, the pool has 100 grams of pollutants in the water, and there's additional pollutants flowing in the pool at a rate of two grams per cubic meter. When these new pollutants enter the pool, they mix and spread out quickly so the concentration of the pool is uniform in terms of the concentration of the pollutants. What is the formula for the number of grams of pollutants as a function of time? Uh, so we're going to call that x of t. So what we're doing is we need to write it, first of all we need to understand what the problem is telling us. Then we need to formulate a differential equation that's going to express the concentration or the amount of these pollutants in the pool in terms of everything that we have and then we just need to solve that equation. It's a bit like related rate problems in calculus, you just have to get some practice with it. So what we have is what we're trying to find is um, we want to find, find x of t which is the, con which is the uh, amount of pollutants in the pool. And of course it's a function of time. It's going to change because the problem actually says that we start out with 100 grams of pollutants in the pool and we have water flowing in and in, inside of that water we have pollutants coming in at a rate of 2 grams per cubic meter. So of course the, constant, the pollutant amount is going to change because I start with so many pollutants in the pool and then I'm dumping water in uh, with more pollutants. Of course water's draining out the other end also. That makes the problem more interesting. But it's all going to be changing. So the amount of pollutants in the pool is going to be changing and I'm going to call that x of t. So if you, if you had to draw a picture, which is a pretty useful thing to do in a lot of these problems, then you would have a pool, right? Something like this. Like that. And the pool would be uh, 1,000 cubic meters, it's just the volume of it, all right? And initially inside this pool, let me change colors, initially, I'm going to put initially, I have 100 grams of pollutants, I'm going to call it pole for pollutants, inside this pool, that's what I have initially. Now, I have water flowing in and I have water flowing out, so the water flowing in I'm just going to represent by this arrow, and the water flowing out I'm going to represent